Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode two of Cloud Native Classroom here on Cloud Native TV. My name is Kat Cosgrove. And before we get started, I have to warn you that this is an official CNCF live stream event, which means that the CNCF code of conduct is in force here. So be nice. Don't say anything crude and, you know, just generally behave. But we are watching the Twitch chat. So if you have questions for me or for my guest or you know, just in general about whatever, let her rip. We will see them and we will be happy to answer you if we can. I am joined today by Ted, one of the founders of Open Telemetry, who's here to help me understand what observability means <laughs> and also how Open Telemetry can help. How you doing, Ted? Doing great. Uh, nice to meet you, Kat. Great to be on the show. Glad to have you. Uh, it's a it's a big help. There are so many things in the CNCF sandbox. Uh, I'm a CNCF ambassador, and I I can't keep track of them. Uh, I don't know if you're doing any better as somebody who actually like <laughs> supports one of these things. But uh, so like what what actually does observability mean in a Kubernetes context? Like what what problem are we solving here when we talk about all of these different observability tools? Yeah. So observability means monitoring, despite all the hype. Uh, okay. That that part hasn't changed. Um, it means when you're running your system, uh, you're going to have problems, and then you're going to have to fix those problems. Sure. And so observability is the piece between um, hearing. Well, it's hearing that there's a problem, investigating the problem. Mm -hmm. And then you got to go and solve it. So it's the hearing about the problem and investigating it part. Uh, in order to do that, you need to have some kind of signal uh, coming out of your system to see what it's doing. Mm -hmm. And I say it's like it hasn't really changed uh, because you know running your system hasn't really changed. The bugs are the same bugs that there ever were. So uh, in that sense, observability is is not new, but um, there is some new tooling available, and that's actually what Open Telemetry provides. So Open Telemetry is the the part of an observability system. You can think of observability as two parts. There's uh, generating the data and sending it somewhere. So that's telemetry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like look up the you know uh, Webster definition of telemetry. Uh, it's you know uh, sending. Um, uh, signals and observations about a remote object uh, to somewhere where you can analyze it. Okay. So open telemetry is um, just generating that data and sending it somewhere. It's not analyzing the data. So analyzing the data sold sold separately. And <laughs> that's that's actually a new thing though because in, in the past usually someone would make a tool, um, whether it's you know like a closed source thing like uh, App Dynamics or New Relic, or it's uh, an open source thing like Prometheus, it's like cool. You make your analysis tool, um, and then you need to offer people instrumentation packages so they can go out and generate metrics and logs and things. And so it's kind of like a unified stack. Uh, okay. You generate the data to send it to the thing that analyzes the data. And that creates a lot of vendor lock-in in a way that's really pernicious. Even, even with open source stuff, it's not just like vendor for money issue. It's just um, instrumenting your system is a, what we call a cross-cutting concern. In other words, you take all of those little log API calls and you just sprinkle them everywhere. So you end up with just, <laughs> just approximately a hajillion logs and metrics calls just all over your system. And then if you want to use a different tool to analyze that data, it's like we have to now go re-instrument all of that stuff. Uh, and so that that's kind of like one of the core problems uh, we were looking at. Um, okay. And then the, the other issue is this sort of siloed approach we've had. Because every tool analyzed one type of data. Maybe it's a, a metrics tool that makes metrics dashboards. Maybe it's a logging tool that stores your logs and lets you search through them. Maybe it's some kind of profiling tool. Everyone makes like their tool and then the instrumentation for that. And a side effect of that is all of this data is siloed and doesn't 
And that's it, not the greatest. It's not, good. it's not good because the reality is we don't we don't use these tools separately. When you're when you're trying to observe a a system, you um, you have this cycle you go through of first noticing, you know, you have like an alert, like uh, a metric. Um, here, I, I've got. Uh, can we share my screen? I've actually got yeah. like some some slides about this. So sure. Go full screen on me. There we go. So like the way like we really tend to do this is like some metric goes squiggly, um, and you get an alert. You want to know why it's squiggly, and so what you do is you look at your dashboard full of metrics. You kind of squint at them. Yeah, and then you try to figure out which other metrics went squiggly at the same time. Um, like in the past, I've, I've literally like, I will take a ruler um, or a piece of paper or something and just line it up on the dashboard and be like, what what other metrics uh, went squiggly at the same time? And <laughs> the way you're phrasing this a lot. Because <laughs> it's, it's like, it's not, yeah. let's let's not be highfalutin about, about this. Like that's, we're just yeah. like, this went squiggly. This other thing went squiggly. Okay, those seem to correlate. What might that mean? And you start thinking, well, it might it might mean this or that. And so you start going through your logs to see, like, well, what are the transactions? Like, what are the chain of events that may sure. have caused this problem? You might start looking at your configuration files and be like, is something misconfigured somewhere? Is like, you know, are these you know, these Kafka nodes configured differently from these other ones. And so you're trying to like take all these different data sources, configuration data, um, like all the resource data about all the different machines you're running, um, logging data, um, aggregate data, like metrics. And you're trying to find correlations between all these different kinds of data. And once you've started to find some correlations, you start to build a, a a guess about what the problem might be. And then at that point, you can try to go verify whether your guess is correct, and hopefully it is, and then you go roll out a fix. And what's difficult about this process is um, people tend to spend a lot of time trying to find those correlations. Yeah. So I mean, that's a really uh, labor intensive process. It's, it's and... really labor intensive. Uh, just just finding the logs, just finding the logs, for like, example, literally, where are they? Where where are the logs? Uh, when you've got like, you know, 100 machines, and they're all handling 1000s of requests at the same time, your logs are just this, this blizzard of stuff. And even if you have them, uh, in a system that can index them, what what index are you actually going to use to to find just the logs in that one transaction? Yeah, that's not really helpful for an actual for a human. We just, we do it, that. but we we end up spending a lot of time when we're observing these systems actually um, just trying to find the data and collect yeah. it. It's it's one of those pain points that you you get used to and you don't. You don't realize it's unnecessary. I was. This is sort of like when good code formatting tools started to show up. I feel like <laughs> the Go programming language really kicked this into high gear. But where, like, you just get used to like the IDE just like formats your code. You don't think about it, and then you go back to some setup where you have to do it yourself, and suddenly you're like, "Why am I pressing <laughs> Tab all the time?" And yeah. like, why, this this is terrible. I don't want to do this. Um, and so I feel like what you're getting out of open telemetry is um, the kind of correlations and indexes across these different uh, types of signals so that you can feed it all into one tool um, that can cross index all this stuff. And if you have one tool that can do that and the data is actually structured into a graph, it's actually like properly structured data, um, with a lot of semantic meaning. So you can see this is an HTTP client request mm -hmm. and this is like a Kafka queue and all of that. Then um, you can start applying some machine analysis to that data, which means the machines can start finding these correlations for you. Um, and so you can say, 
uh, look at look at some metrics, um, and then be able to say, okay, I see this spike here in my metrics. What what are example traces um, that are associated with this spike in my metric? I just want to see rather than try to guess and go figure it out. Just show me the the actual transactions that we're generating this metric, for example. So having having all these different data types um, connected into a proper data into a proper yeah. graph lets you do this kind of automated analysis. And people are going to try to sell this like AI ops, and it's just going to like think for you. And that's not true. It's not going to do that very well. Um, but it will be able to like automate a lot of this digging around that currently has to go through a human brain. Yeah. And once you get that off of your plate, it's it's really liberating because you you can start testing your hypotheses very quickly. You don't have to think, well, if I want to check that, that means I've got to go dig around a bunch. It's going to take me like 15 minutes to like get all that data together and then grep through it. So I don't know. Uh, you know, you start you, you get a little cautious about like where you want to place your bets. And if you can just like click sure. through really quickly, then then you're spending much more of your time actually just trying Fake to analyze the data <laughs> and like, you know, making guesses and verifying them. So so that's that's like one of the big value propositions I think open telemetry is bringing. And by doing that in an open source way, uh, where we're essentially trying to create a standard by getting all of the big players on board to agree they're all going to generate and consume this data and doing it in a way that's stable and neutral enough um, with like the right kind of dependency chain stuff, which I can dig into. But basically, we've made it potentially consumable for open source libraries as well. So if you have a library that's going to get shared in a bunch of different systems, like a web framework or you know a database client, you can actually instrument that library yourself with open telemetry. And then when it plugs into an application, with other libraries using open telemetry and the application itself using open telemetry, they all automatically oh. start talking to each other. That's actually really rad because I am I'm like deeply lazy, like in incredibly yeah. lazy. I'm the flavor of like super lazy engineer where I will spend like a bunch of extra time at the beginning of a project to wire up things that enable me to do nothing later on or at least do do less busy work, do yeah. like fewer, like boring, repetitive things. So uh, this is appealing to the lazy part of my brain in, yeah. a, in a pretty big way. <laughs> yeah, I think that that aspect is gonna be, gonna be really helpful. Um, and the whole thing is built on top of what's called distributed tracing, which uh, used to be seen as a niche tool, but uh, basically, what distributed tracing is, is it's a, a context that follows your code as it's executing. Mm -hmm. So for people who have, I feel like this is CNCF land, so there's probably for a number of Go developers. And Go oh, yeah, is this ex explicit context that you just have to hand around uh, like a jerk. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the fact that you have to hand it around by hand, but I am I don't disagree with you. I don't write Go personally. Like I know yeah, it, but I, it's not. I, I actually I have a YouTube video that's like a rant about context uh, that just really digs into that particular issue. Uh, it is a bummer you have to pass around by hand, but it is great that there is a canonical context object and everyone has agreed like this is where you put your stuff. And so that allows you to hand things like like um, open telemetry constructs that have to follow your code, just go into the con sure. context object. And those uh, objects we call spans are what generate this graph. So they have what's called a trace ID. I um, uh, could probably just draw this, but sure. let's see. Let's see here. Let's do some drawing. Yeah. While uh, Ted's pulling up the, the drawing app, just a reminder to click the follow button so that you uh, can A, use the chat, ask us questions. Please do ask us questions even if they're not related to open telemetry, if you have questions about Ted's virtual background or uh, my hair, that's fine too. This is a real uh, background. Is this it? is my living room. Oh yeah. my God, really? 
See, it's real. Your living room is incredible. Oh, thanks. Wow. Yeah. It's yeah. just, it's so perfect. I assumed that it was a virtual <laughs> background. That's that's wild. Wow. Good job. No, no. Yeah. This is just, I, I just camp out in here all the time. So, you, you know, designed had, it so I had, well. I had to make it pretty. Yeah. Um, very pretty. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Fun? follow us on, on yeah. Twitch <laughs> yeah. so you can talk to us and also so that you know when we're live next. Let's do some drawing. Yeah. Okie doke. So distributed tracing is basically, you know, you've got, let's say you've got two services here and there's like some operations that are occurring. Okay. So you have like operation A calls operation B, which calls operation C. And then that makes like a little network request here. Boop, boop, boop. So this makes like a network request to this other service, which then has some more operations. And then, you know, maybe it makes some more requests to other things and so on and so forth. So you've got this kind of chain of services and you've got the, the user coming in here, you know, clicking buy or whatever it is that's kicking all of this mm -hmm. off. And so in all of these operations here, you have events, which are basically like logs. So you have all these little events happening. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. You know, request started, request finished, uh, all of that kind of stuff. What you have with open telemetry is this concept called a span, which says all of these events are in one operation. So let's call that a span. And a span has an ID. And okay. all of these spans are connected to each other where each span has a parent. So you have a parent ID. Sorry, my handwriting is terrible. No, it's fine. And then, so that's that's the basis of your graph is you've got each, each thing's got an ID, it's got a parent, right? Basic graph. And then this whole overall graph has an ID for the entire transaction, which is called your trace ID. Okay. Uh, Somebody is asking what you're using to draw, by the way. Uh, oh, I'm drawing in Photoshop right now. Uh, cool. I like to draw on Procreate in iPad. That's like my favorite thing. But if I'm on desktop, I'm just... They, they pay for the Adobe thing, so I use it. Right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Span ID, pair... Uh, span, you got your span ID, your parent ID, and then your trace ID. Got it. And so this, this blob of data can then be associated with every log operation, which has, uh, actually let's call these attributes. So like span attributes. Uh, metrics. and then anything else you might end up uh, generating. So span attributes are things like the, the operation, the duration of the operation, the start time, and then a bunch of indexes that you might wanna have on all of the different events. So for example, if you have an HTTP request, there's, you know, things like, you know, what's the method, what's the URL, What's the status code that was returned? All of that. Did this operation succeed? Did it fail? Those kind of attributes are collectively applied to all of the events uh, that would occur within that particular operation. So we call Rad. those we call those attributes. And then the logs themselves, these also have attributes. So it's attributes all the way down. Likewise, the metrics <laughs> have, have attributes. attributes all the way down. Yeah. But if you make it, the point is once you get tracing set up, then anytime you make a log or anytime you make a metric, it automatically gets this, these IDs stapled onto it. And so this allows you, if you find one of these things, for example, like if you're mm -hmm. looking at like the log, that's like this thing blew up. Like, so maybe it's, it's like kaboom here. Oh no. And you're like, okay, Tragedy. so I, I got this, I got this event, but I want to know 
like what what happened here? Like what kicked this off? Uh, I may not have all the data I need here. I may want to know something that occurred somewhere else. Uh, for example, there might be some correlation that's happening. Like this blew up. And you might be noticing every time this blew up, um, this thing has like project ID, you know, five. And you're like, wow, we're getting a bunch of errors and being able to quickly see like all the errors are coming from one project. That would that would tell you a lot. Immediately, yeah, that yeah. there is a problem specifically here. Yeah. Or latency has gone through the roof. Like a key, your Kafka queue is backing up and noticing like all of that delay is happening from Kafka node six. That kind of stuff is going to to really rapidly um, rapidly help. And I should mention, in addition to these spans, uh, so this is the kind of transaction context. So we call this like like this is uh, trace con. Ah, here we go. So this is what we call trace context. We also have all of this stuff here, which are called resources. So resources are things like, you know, service name, uh, you know, Kubernetes info, okay. you know, what, you know, cloud info. So all of your resources and also config, like you can put all of your configuration information into this okay. stuff. So you're able to, to kind of cross index, um, not just looking at uh, the transactions, which are kind of like every time this runs, what happens? You're also then looking at what are the services? What are the resources this transaction was associated with? And so having all of that data together lets you move around a lot. And this includes metrics, right? So if you generate a metric somewhere in here, uh, that metric is going to automatically get associated with you know the machine that it was generated from. And then it's also going to, every time you say count that metric, it's going to mm -hmm. get associated with the transaction that caused that count. And so these are what are called exemplars. And that allows you to, to kind of, if you have a tool that will do this, uh, bounce back and forth between like looking at your metrics and then just looking at the transactions that cost it. Wow, that's uh, cool. So, I'm, so yeah, because so that's again, open I'm telemetry lazy. in a nutshell. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's open telemetry in a nutshell. Is like that's that's the value prop. Uh, the other value prop, like I said, is by doing this in like an open source standard approach. And by standard, I mean we convincing everyone to use it and. We're developing it in a manner that's really focused on long-term stability. Mm -hmm. Like we're we're never gonna ship a 2.0 of any of our stable interfaces once they become stable. You know, Microsoft is talking about baking open telemetry into Word and Windows and things like that. So you're talking about huh. software that has a shelf life of like 20 years. So that's yeah. the sort of time scale of like stability and support we're thinking about. Uh, and that's what's going to allow open source software to be like, well, you know what? I could instrument myself rather than having instrumentation come as a plugin that kind of hooks in, which is how it currently works. Mm -hmm. uh, you can say, well, I'm going to instrument my database client or my web framework myself, and then I'm going to ship a playbook to my users. So let them know I provided them all these configuration options, let them tune. And I'm providing them this observability data, and I'm going to give them a playbook that says, you know, when you see these kinds of squigglies, it means you know you should tune tune these knobs. Uh, right now, playbooks are something SREs just make for themselves. But my hope is in the future, the people who uh, write the software will be able to to hand you the playbooks. So Bad. yeah, that's that. Those are the big big goals for the Open Telemetry project. Those are big goals, but uh, so is this this is something that like anybody can just take a crack at themselves, right? Like if somebody wants to go wire up their personal project with this, they can just yes, let it rip. 
Yeah, tracing is stable, so it's totally fine. Uh, once any, look at any uh, client that comes out, once it's hit 1.0, that means tracing is stable. We're uh, working on the metrics uh, API right now, so cool. that'll be stable by the end of the year. And um, we're also working on on logs. So you can you can essentially log using the tracing system today. Sick. Yeah. Uh, this has been this has been really really great. This has been really helpful, uh, especially for for me. I hope it was uh, helpful for the like thirty ish people watching us. But uh, for me, it was useful because I didn't really understand what Open Telemetry did before this, which is the whole point of this show. Because I genuinely do not understand any of the projects I'm inviting on here. <laughs> That way it's more authentic and I don't have to like pretend to ask a stupid question. I just like authentically ask a stupid question. But uh, we are running out of time. Uh, so before we go, is there anything you would like to shill for? Yeah, so I would like to shill in general for the open telemetry community. We're very, it's a very open community. Uh, we uh, hang out on Slack, uh, the CNCF Slack, uh, any channel that starts Otel Dash. There's an open general open telemetry channel. You can say hi, but we uh, we work in work SIGs just like Kubernetes, and so all the SIGs have a channel, and uh, the SIGs often meet every week um, on Zoom. So there's a calendar, and all of that information is in. If you go to our GitHub org, there's a repo called Community, mm -hmm. and that has that has all the info. Um, for KubeCon coming up, just, you know, sneak uh, preview. We're going to try to do a live open telemetry community day. It won't be part of KubeCon because we want to not require a KubeCon ticket and to keep the, the cost low for attendees. So it'll probably, we have to work the details out, but it will be very cheap to attend and it'll be like a one day on conference, basically a big community get together because we haven't seen each other because of the pandemic. <laughs> so uh, have a look out for that. Uh, um, we should hopefully be announcing that soonish. Uh, so if you're thinking about going to KubeCon or just are in LA for some reason, um, uh, you should come by and say hi. Brad, well, uh, thank you so much for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, everybody on Twitch who's still watching, the next show on Cloud Native TV is tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific time. It's Fields Tested with Kaslin Fields. She is uh, walking everybody through it while she deploys a personal blog on Kubernetes because what do we love? Over-engineering simple things. I do, at least. So go see Kaslin tomorrow. I will be back week after next. And Ted? We'll see you on Twitter. Thank you so much. Bye. Aloha.